good, good afternoon, and uh, <clears throat> dear Suzanne and dear uh, Raoul. Uh, I, I have clearly in my mind that uh, the problems we have in Paris are small, comparing with the problems in a city like uh, Addis Ababa or other cities of Africa and uh, uh, Asia. But uh, I think that the experiences of the <clears throat> European cities uh, could be interesting uh, uh, as well. Uh, I will describe briefly uh, three social and urban challenges. Well, I will, I will describe briefly uh, three social and urban challenges we have in Paris and three types of uh, solutions. The first one is obviously uh, the wing road. You know that Paris is uh, surrounded by a big uh, wing road, one of the most frequented uh, uh, wing road uh, in the world, one million uh, vehicles per day. Uh, and uh, it's an historical and uh, psychological barrier that cut Paris from the suburbs. Huge pollution problems are associated for the people who live besides, but also for the Parisian in general. One of the most central urban highways among uh, European cities. And uh, this is clearly an urban barrier. Problems of crossing, problems of safety, uh, congested crossroads, which should be plaza, impossibility for people to go by foot from uh, one uh, side to, to, to the other. Uh, you have a belt, uh, and you can see it on the, on the, on the picture. Uh, of social housing all along the wing road. And this is an accumulation of inequalities uh, because you have this problem of pollution and of course the problem uh, of, the, of the noise. Um, uh, from one side of uh, the wing road to the other one, prices can be divided by two. Uh, but uh, the wing road is not our only frontier. We also have an architectural frontier. The Haussmann style, which is known worldwide, is typical of the center of Paris. Its density, its urban shape, its regularity have made Paris architecture famous. In the outskirts of Paris, it is not the dominant architectural style. And uh, you can see on this slide uh, some grands ensembles inspired by Le Corbusier such as this one, they are typical of the working class areas of the city of Paris. They are also symbolic of an architectural style, but they face major pro problems nowadays in terms of renovation, care of public space, security, and so on. You can recognize this kind of uh, architecture through those red bricks. They are, in general, very beautiful buildings, but also quite damaged inside and suffer of problems of humidity. Those architectural differences are important in the psychology of inequalities in our metropolis. The second challenge is east-west inequalities. In addition, we have a problem, global problem of spatial inequalities, both in terms of population and users. Historically, Concentration of offices in the western part of the metropolis, La Défense and the Quartier uh, Central des Affaires, and of social housing in the east of Paris. And this map represents the financial potential per inhabitant. In the territories printed in red, the medium income is more than 30,000 euros per year, while in the territories painted in yellow, it is less than 15,000 per year. This is, of course, a big challenge for the metropolis because we have to convince the Western territories to build more social housing and to accept not to have all the offices. And we have to convince the firms, the companies, to go to the East. Third problem is where to build because you know that Paris is one of the densest cities in the world thanks to Baron Haussmann. And uh, this density uh, is sometimes higher than the density of African or uh, uh, Asian cities. Paris is small, the inner Paris is small and dense, so we don't have much space to build inside the city to create parks. Every construction is complex and expensive and people are fed up with uh, uh, 
density or more uh, density. So uh, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it's a big challenge because a lot of people want to live in Paris and there is a huge demand for uh, social housing uh, in Paris. So what are the solutions? I, I will uh, review three kind of solutions. Um, let's say uh, coercive ones, incentives one, and what I call commons, urban commons. In Paris, we have strict planning uh, rules. Depending on the area, uh, we impose shares of social housing or we restrict the square meters of office uh, that can be built. For example, uh, this building, uh, which is very recent in Paris, mixes social and private housing, half and half, 50% of social housing, 50% of private housing. It is impossible to know from the street which ones are private or public. We guarantee the same urban quality to everybody. The general objective of 30% of social housing at the scale of the city is difficult to reach, but we are investing a lot of money, billions of euros, in order to reach this objective of 30% of uh, social uh, housing. On some sites, developers have to build 60% of social housing if they want to do a development. The second uh, uh, strategy is a strategy of uh, soft power, giving uh, incentives to create private projects of general interest. Uh, the, idea is a, okay. the idea is to, to have projects which serve better the general interest. We have decided to change the rules of the game when we sell public land. Rather than selling to the, uh, it to the highest bidder, we, we sell it to the best project. And believe me, because I've done a lot of jury, uh, the highest bidder is generally the worst project. <coughs> it, has begun, uh, it has begun with a competition called Reinventing Paris, launched uh, in 2014, uh, in, uh, and it's now being extended to all our public sites. The idea of this competition was to bring the best teams of architects, innovators, researchers to Paris by giving them the opportunity of building differently and better. We choose uh, 23 sites all around Paris, very different ones from all the mansions in the center of Paris to Westland along the Ring Road. We wanted to show that innovation was possible everywhere from empty sites to existing buildings. The idea is to systematically organize competition when a public land is sold. We ask for a complete team with a mixed project interesting users to the, for the area, social housing, new services. It has changed the way developers approach urban projects in Paris. I will give you two examples. The first one, yes, the first one is the project called Thousand Trees, Milarbre. It's both a building and a forest, a new link between Paris and the suburb over the Ring Road. We have chosen this project while another project was proposing 30 million euros uh, more. The building permit has been delivered and the project will be realized by 2023. A second example, very different, is the railway farm, a project carried out by a collective mixing neighbors and NGOs. This project is about a farm inside the city and housing units for people who will work inside. It is a very social and ecological. For this reason, project is for this reason, we have accepted to rent this space for almost nothing to the collective of association NGO. This type of process can be done everywhere. With the C40, we have launched a, a big tender called Reinventing Cities, a global competition based on the same rule. Quality rather than price only. Teams are competing on all continents to create carbon neutral projects. And finally, commons. Creating commons for all. How we resolve those social and urban problems is not only about our regulation or about how we build, but also about public space. Designing public spaces 
where everybody feels welcome makes a big difference. In Paris, we ensure that no space gets appropriated by a certain type of class, gender, or mobility. This is why we transformed the river banks, which were dedicated to cars, into a promenade where everybody feels welcome from the Parisian to the suburban people. Almost all activities there are free or low price. And you can see how the difference is spectacular. It's exactly the same place uh, before uh, and after. Uh, and uh, on this uh, uh, project, we have decided to have flexible installation that enable to change use frequently. It is also a post-carbon approach to public space. No heavy installation, reversibility, and frugality. We ensure that very different users find their space there, from skateboarding to jogging, from simply enjoying the Seine River to having a picnic with the family. I think that the mix of uh, coercive and incentive solutions is essential for any city and that we must overcome our classical categories. Private projects can generate commons and the public space is not commons per se. It has to be designed as such. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah. Jean-Louis, while, while you're walking back, I'm just going, I'm going to make a couple of comments and maybe a question so that, because I think they're going to be so different that we might as well put some things on the table. You know, I mean, I think for me, Paris, and just listening to you speak, in, in some ways, you know, with what's happening today, and already it's beginning to surface in conversations in terms of the artifact, whether it's special economic zones or these new towns and gated communities, it makes Hausmann seem like a complete humanist in a sense, I mean a deep humanist, because what Hausmann did there was truly create, in fact I think the definition of an organic city comes from the metaphors he had to the autonomy of the human body and creating networks between the organs and that's how the organic comes. And so networks was very much emphasized in that reconstruction of Paris, which is what's made it sustain in this incredibly robust way. So there are two questions I have, one is, in this new thinking and identification, for example, of the number of competitions or the projects, the land that comes up, how much of that is being thought today? Because the networks is what made Paris, I think, gives it its life. Uh, and the second question I was struck by, the three projects you showed, one went from architecture as spectacle uh, to the farm uh, uh, to uh, 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 installation intervention. And I read in that a fascinating temporal scale of material life cycles and all of that. Architecture, you're investing in something for 100 years. The farm is very reversible. It's a holding strategy. And the installation is completely reversible when the season is over. So is that a conscious kind of strategy in your thinking? Yes. Oh. Yeah, uh, you're, you're perfectly right. I think that's... Uh, uh, when you, you are uh, speaking about sustainability, sometimes you have to be very uh, uh, aware that sustainability means not only reversibility, but uh, temporary urbanism, temporary urban planning. So uh, uh, the, the traditional vision of urbanism as a, a complete uh, global vision uh, of a future for 30 years, I think it's more or less has to be questioned. It's not finished, of course. We need to think to a very long, long term uh, with a long vision. But the question of uh, uh, temporary urbanism, the question of uh, reversibility, the question of uh, emergency architecture are questions which are asked everywhere in the, in, in the world. For example, we have refugees in Paris, we have migrants, so we need uh, emergency architecture. We have big projects, and sometimes big projects last five or ten years. So what do we do with this land or these buildings during the, the period of the uh, conception of the project? This is why we uh, try to organize the temporary occupation of these uh, sites. And for example, for the, for the River Seine, for the, for the, for the banks, uh, uh, it's mandatory. We know that we will have uh, floodings. So we need to have very uh, light and uh, very uh, easy to take off 
uh, uh, installations. So I think that these projects, I've shown, of course, the two extreme uh, 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 winners of uh, reinventing Paris. One is very beautiful and big architecture, Su Fujimoto, and the other one is a very local project. Uh, uh, the neighbors are working on it, and so uh, and so on. But I think these two extremes are very representative of what is the new uh, yes. urban planning. And I think this just uh, sec it links beautifully also to a question that was put on the table in the last panel, which was this idea of the incomplete, uh, the city as being incomplete. And I think there's an intersection there we might pick up on. Yeah.